Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I think you can hear me. So I have just 15 minutes slot, so need to be quick, but uh, let's see what happens. So again, hello, my name is Eugene. I work for eBay. And just before we start, um, this is a talk as an experience report with all the ensuing drama involved. And uh, funny, like yesterday and uh, on Sunday, I've heard like different people asking questions like, uh, how to introduce typed FP to my team, or how do we use more functional programming style? Here? Sorry. Uh, so yeah, people are just uh, interested in how to do more functional things. And, uh, and this talk is kind of my experience in moving toward the same direction. So let's, let's start. So some... Um, some uninteresting stuff at the beginning. I work in a team uh, which is responsible for content auction server, which needs to uh, give in a request for content, like for one and two on any page, uh, produce some content. And uh, we use an auction and we query interested parties to put some content there. And uh, we run an auction, figure out like what is the best thing and put it there. And one of the cross-cutting aspect of that is uh, tracking what happens during this auction. And tracking, um, I don't know if someone can be not familiar with this uh, concept, but tracking is just collecting pieces of uh, information, important information about the, the auction in this case, like who participated in the auction, who won the auction, what price, uh, things like that. And uh, originally we kind of uh, looked at tracking the same way as you look usually at login, it's uh, as Bill said, uh, what was it like? Uh, pure, uh, a practical pure tin, right? So uh, you can see an example here: run auction takes the bids, and it takes uh, also implicit tracker alongside the logger because they look same, and returns some option winner. And tracker is pretty much a bunch of uh, track methods. Uh, here's just one returning unit. So it, it kind of worked. When Codebase was small, the new project, and they had just one auction per request, and there were like uh, only few values need to be tracked. And uh, we liked this like, oh, signature look clean. We don't need to show this like trackers thing. It's just like take bids, return option winner. Cool, and uh, of course we tested that. Otherwise, like you don't know what happens with unit, right? So we said like, life was good. But then it kind of stopped working. The code base was growing and more and more things need to be tracked. And uh, right now, uh, like uh, request uh, uh, is expanded to multiple auctions now. And uh, each auction is several like tiers and some of those tiers are non-trivial. And sorry, uh, you get in like uh, just explosion of this thing. And uh, it felt, felt like awkward. We knew something is wrong here. And we decided as a team get together and like uh, name the issues which bother us and try to find a solution for that. And uh, first thing was uh, tracking is not login, right? So while tracking looks similar to login, uh, it, it is very different in the in the in the essence. Uh, like losing login partially or even like completely for some time, especially if nothing bad happens, you just don't even notice that, you just, you survive fine. Uh, losing tracking is very visible and can be super expensive. If you base uh, some things on it, it can be very expensive. So we agreed that it's kind of, uh, tracking is very important to us and we wanted to show that in the type system. Um, so we agreed that putting that in type system is, 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 is a better way. And by the way, <laughs> Uh, for those who see two teddy bears, uh, this is a puppy and this is a teddy bear. <laughs> it, it's, it's like uh, logging and tracking look similar, but they're very different. So another, another thing was that um, the way we implemented tracker was uh, this unit function you call and it was collecting all the tracking pieces and then at some point later send it to some tracking service and uh, it, it was pretty much like shared mutable state. And we all know it's not good. I mean, it's not super hard to make it work here, but you never know what happens tomorrow, what 
who changed what. So it's always better without mutation, uh, shared mutable state, I mean. And uh, another thing was that it, it just, it was getting like uh, too messy. Like uh, those unit calls, they are non item potent. If you have retry somewhere, you can end up with like something tracked twice, for example. And it's, it's when, when you, someone looks at this code, it doesn't really clear what this thing does. Does it like send something immediately? Does it calculate something? Does it store that in memory? It's a unit, you, you, you know nothing about it. So we said, okay, that's probably enough for us to get rid of this uh, side effect in tracking and um, we we'll just uh, do it. And I was one uh, like on the quest to implement that and um, so I, I, I thought, okay, that sounds like exactly the use case for write and monad. And um, I'm assuming most of the people know what that is. Is there anyone who doesn't know what write and monad is? Okay, a couple of people, cool. So, okay, so let's just go through these slides also. This is, uh, instead of me talking about write and monad, I'm just showing you the quote from uh, Cats with Scala. It's a nice book, recommend it. Writer is a monad that lets us carry a log along with the computation. We can use it to record messages, errors, or additional data about a computation and extract the log alongside the final result. And uh, if it's not enough, that's another one from uh, Learn You Haskell. Uh, you can read it yourself. So pretty much saying the same thing. Also a nice book, I recommend it. And if it's still like not clear, and I know it can be not clear, uh, here's a quick example with using uh, CATS uh, writer implementation. So first we use some um, imports, then we create two writers, values two and three, and the log is just a string, got two, got three. Then we throw them in for comprehension and add some additional log in there and uh, sum up the values. And then we can run writer and get a log and result. So as we expect, log is like everything combined, everything we had, and the result is five. So uh, it looks like uh, kind of the good solution for the problem I stated, and uh, uh, we have like a cat's writer, for example, or Scala Z writer, uh, but let's get back to reality, right? I know some people here like eat uh, semi-groups and monads for breakfast and uh, you probably have like uh, applicatives and monads for lunch, but there are lots of other people out there who are not familiar with those concepts at all. Like even with like after years writing Scala or like decades writing Java, like they just never heard of those. And that's fine, that, that's reality. It's like we, we need to live with that. So when, those people uh, see this code, it's just like unnatural to them. They, they used to see their like domain code and all of a sudden you see like semi-group there or like monoid and it's like, what the heck? So, and I bet like everyone here heard this like stories like that. Uh, <laughs> my uncle Joe worked on a project where someone used Scala Z and on Friday 13 at midnight, Scala Z ate all the same code and left only dark magic spells full of weird drones instead. <laughs> Boo. So, I mean, you can replace uh, Scala Z with cats uh, to some degree, I guess. It's uh, maybe less using the you know, cryptic things, but it uh, doesn't matter. So, and my team, uh, my team is quite big and uh, very diverse in terms of like experience with Scala and typed FP. And I had to like go through some questions like, okay, I want to use a writer and do I just write very specific writer implementation which kind of uh, removes all that stuff or do I just reuse one? Uh, and I didn't want to do like duplication so okay, we already had cats at this point in class path so I, I thought like okay, I'm just gonna use uh, cats and uh, have this uh, some samples like package object tracking, and uh, I have this type track A, which is a writer, tracking data and A, where tracking data is just vector pair skeeter value to any super typed. Um, and so 
this looks okay. And then how do we, then, then I had like a bunch of, when starting implementing that, I had a bunch of questions like how do we do things with that? And like one thing was like how to create a tract with or without tracking data, right? And uh, usually people, sorry, people say, yeah, like writer apply or writer syntax, like um, writer method from syntax or like pure from applicative that those will do. And I, I wasn't, I mean, uh, for, for that particular case, I wasn't convinced I, I should use those uh, because of the things I, I told before. So I did that instead. So in this uh, package object tracking, got this uh, any to track the implicit uh, class, which adds two methods, tracking and tracking nothing. Uh, I didn't find any better names. So tracking takes tracking data, tracking nothing takes nothing. They both return track A and delegates to writer. So, and here's like the example on the call side. If you have a function, reduce bits, you get bits and some floor price, and you know how to construct tracking data for floor price. Uh, you can chain them like reduce bits and then call in this extension method tracking, tracking floor price data. And that returns your tracked option winner. Another question was like how to append uh, tracking data to already exist like uh, the, the to, to an object which is already tracked. Right, so writer tell, sort of, yes, no. Uh, so another in, uh, extension, another tract which wraps tract, takes tracking data and delegates to tell. So you can imagine the call side, I don't have it. And uh, then how do we compose things? Usually like uh, the examples I'm showing, they're like simple and like kind of, but uh, usually you have things, other things like futures, tries, uh, eithers, how do you compose them? And um, I mean, uh, I've heard someone said mono transformers. Uh, I, I, yeah, that's, that's an option, but I thought not at that moment. And I just didn't want to get like into another horror story with all of that. So I just thought like, okay, why don't we just use good old map and flat map? Because uh, according to myself, 99% of people who code in Scala get addicted to maps and flat maps very quickly. Uh, they are ubiquitous in Scala. Um, bad joke would be say something like, yeah, yeah every monad has them, right? But um, like if you take a collection on an option, those are monads, that, but like uh, the end standard library and there's nothing saying that those are monads, but there are still maps and flat maps and people use them. And uh, some of those people, they don't know that this map and flat map, they are just like smaller parts of a big thing. But th that's fine, it's still useful, they, they can use it. So uh, here's like example, if you have a, if we have future bids, so it's future of tract of sequence of bids, then, uh, and we have another function which takes bids and returns tract option winner. So what we can do, we can just uh, do map in future and inside it we have tract and then we flat map that with run option. It works. Uh, another interesting question was, um, it's more specific. So how do you flatten it? Uh, if without writer, like somehow we get to this like sequence of sequence of bids and then just to combine them, you just call flatten on it and it just works. Right, and then we got like uh, writer, and so somehow you get this sequence of tracked bits, where tracked bits is tracked sequence of bits. So, and I wanna combine them all, and so I have to convert this sequence of tracked of sequence of bits to just uh, tracked bits. And uh, the straightforward sort of answer is to go with traverse. Traverse has the method flat sequence, which does exactly that. And it's like one line, you can inline it. And here, let's pretend that cats provide uh, type class instances for sequence, which it doesn't. Uh, but uh, so that's, that's an option. It, it, it looks concise, it looks cool, I like it. But um, uh, going for the review, like with the team, I, I added another uh, way to doing that. And here's the um, part of it, so we have uh, non-tracked bits, which is empty sequence with 
track in nothing and method merge, which takes two tracked bits, which are like tracked sequence of bits, and through four comprehension, just merges them similar, same way like we did um, in the example, like uh, when I was showing writer. Uh, and, uh, and then this flattens just fold left with none and merge. And uh, I showed both of them, and there's like voting, and the Democratic says like, we wanna use that. That is more familiar. Fold left is okay. Traverse with cats uh, imports, who knows. <laughs> so, and I wanna stress it again, like it's okay, it's fine. This is like learning process. That is reality. So, and you can imagine somewhere at the end of the world, as someone said before, right? Uh, we just run the writer, get stuff out of it, and uh, send this log where it needs to be sent and like return the value. And uh, so it, it kind of worked. We, we liked it. And like, yeah, we're using writer. What writer? Like, so all the writer code and like cats related code is, uh, is located in this tracking package. And there's nothing leaking outside of it except maps and flat maps. But as we said, maps and flat maps are recognized and accepted. They are fine. People understand what those are. If they don't look in the real signatures, of course. Um, so, and uh, also one of the team members mentioned like, oh, look, now if we want to replace like cats with Scala Z for some reason, or like maybe write our own thing, we just change this like tracking package and that's the only place we need to change and like all our domain code is kind of works as it is. So eventually we got this kind of track DSL or whatever you call it, which hides complexity of writer. And um, someone can say that's like, you know, it's, you're just doing it wrong. It's like those are abstractions. You need to use abstractions instead of hiding them. But uh, I strongly believe in this uh, baby steps mantra so I think uh, this is just a first step toward better code and this is how you can try to sell it to enterprise. That's what, I, that's what I'm doing. Okay, I guess 17 minutes, but less than 20. So the question, sorry, it's too loud. So the question was, uh, if you have, uh, I, I just rephrase, if you have uh, part of uh, the application which uses in writer and something fails, you kind of losing all that stuff, right? <coughs> you know, it's like high memory usage. Say it again, please. High memory usage. Yeah. Uh, no. So if 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 you notice, so. What we do, we're doing before, we were collecting all the, um, all the tracking data in memory anyway, but it was just done in this side effect in a way where like you have like pretty much concurrent collection or something where you stick data. So in terms of memory usage, it's kind of stay the same. Minus like wrapper on, on all the writer, writer wrapper around that instead of some other collection, I guess, so. Yes. So, and, and again, like if you remember the first slide, we have this request response. So it's pretty much like very quick thing. You get in request, you get in uh, bids, and then you run an auction. You, all, all, all things you collected during the auction, that's what you have, and then you flush it somewhere. So that just leaves for the life of request. So it, it doesn't add too much uh, memory you know, constraint. And uh, answering another part, you mentioned like the failure. Uh, yes, uh, the kind of good thing about this, uh, the side effect and thing, if something happens and you already called this thing, it stays there, right? You, you're not losing that. But in this particular case, we figure out that it's, in fact, it's really much better to lose something which failed so we don't uh, do this false tracking 
yeah, we got this like bids and someone won, but in fact it never happened because it timed out or something bad happened. So, so we okay with losing that data and where we are not, we compensate for that with like recovering something and things like that. <laughs> okay, Rob is telling me that, uh, yeah, talk to me later, guys. Rob is kicking me off. 